Hello plant lovers and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Bruno and I'm in the northeast of Europe in the Baltic States, originally from Australia. Uh, just going to do a little bit of a plant update. You might remember in a previous video I showed you how happy I was when I found these tiny little clear plastic pots available at a big box store. Well, what I found the other day is really big clear plastic pots. And I really needed six of these because I've got six really big cover pots, three extremely decorative ones and three uh, very large blue ones. The only problem with a 26 centimeter pot like this is that it's got huge holes in the bottom, if you can see them, which means a lot of my aeroid mix is just going to trickle through the little holes. Well, solve that problem. I found in the store a mosquito net for sale. It wasn't too expensive and I've cut them into little round pieces. They're not material. They're synthetic, so they're not going to rot. And they cut them into nice little round shapes and I fit them in my little pot to cover the bottom so that all my lovely aeroid mix doesn't trickle out of the bottom and it just covers the pot quite nicely. So I was really, really surprised that I found such large pots. I know that for some of my plants, I'm going to need at least two or three of these large pots when my anthurium, bird's nest anthurium continues to grow, it's going to need a big pot, and my philodendron gigantum variegated, eventually will need them. So, like a good boy scout, when you see them in the shop, you buy some. Now, also, today, a hole. I was in a big box store, looking through the plant section and right there in the middle of all the pothos, the golden pothos, the Brazil pothos, etc. I found one plant that was different. And look at these lovely leaves. Now the interesting thing is that on the label it says that it's a pothos happy leaf. Happy leaf. But uh, checking the internet, it appears that Pothos Happy Leaf is just another name for the Mandula Pothos. So I'm quite happy because there are one, two, three, four, five cuttings in the pot. I'm going to leave them in its original pot for a little while to acclimatize. But I just love, just love, love, love the coloring on this. Beautiful. So and hopefully, as I've mentioned before, I want this mandula to grow up a moss pole. Now, a couple of other interesting things. Some friends of mine gave me an interesting cutting. I think it's called a clusia, which is sometimes called an autograph tree because apparently they have such thick leaves that you can scratch a message in the leaf and it's there for a long time. Usually they're green, but my friends gave me a cutting of a variegated one. Could be quite nice as an indoor plant. I've just trying to propagate it in water. Mm, sort of two weeks have gone by, nothing has come out. But the interesting thing is they also gave me a fruit from this plant and it had seeds. And I got out 10 seeds, plant, uh, put them in my prop box on top of um, damp sphagnum moss. And of the 10 seeds, two have rotted away, three have sprouted and sent uh, a, a main root down into the, into the moss. So I'm hopeful that I'm going to see some nice little leaves. And it'll be interesting to see whether the seeds produce a variegated leaf or it's going to be a standard green leaf. The other thing that I bought quite recently is one of these. 
a Saracenia, or what's called sometimes a trumpet pitcher plant. And I created a little swamp for it with a small gravel at the bottom, a cocoa peat and sphagnum moss on the top. And I think it must like what I've done because I've only had it for about a week. And I can see that in the very middle of the plant, it's letting out a new leaf. This is going to be what I'll call my eco-friendly pest control. Sorry, catch all the gnats that are fly sometimes flying around. I don't have very many at all. I did also buy a uh, Drosera, which is a, a sundew plant. I've put it on in my own little mini glass house because it, it wasn't looking very, very healthy, but it's doing quite well in the humidity under the glass. I uh, also created a little swamp for it to grow. Interesting thing is that um, we call it a, a sundew plant, but here in Lithuania, in the Lithuanian language, it's called a grave sundew. Apparently, they grow on graves. I've never actually seen them growing on graves, maybe on very old neglected graves, but they're called grave sundews here, over here. So, what else is new? Oh, yes. Little bit, ah, my little marble queen pothos uh, cuttings that were rooting in water. Well, all the roots uh, were three to four centimeters long, some five centimeters long. So I've potted them all up into a, a small pot and uh, hopefully things will get growing. Now, sad things. My Hoya Australis. I think I have overwatered this particular Hoya because it wasn't doing very well, even though I moved it to my south facing windows because you'll never guess, we've had quite a few sunny days recently. And there's a real war, not a war, a battle going on between winter and spring over here at the moment. The other day, if you sometimes hear the pitter-patter of little feet behind me, it's my dog, my little Benji, running around. So I, the other day I took him out at 7 a.m. for a walk and we were out there in the middle of a blizzard. Eight o'clock in the morning, blue skies, sunshine. Eleven o'clock in the morning, snowstorm. Three o'clock in the afternoon for the rest of the day, blue skies and sunshine. So we're sort of in the middle of this battle between who's going to win. Is uh, winter going to withdraw or is uh, spring going to win? But remember, the here in the Northern Hemisphere, the 1st of March is not really the beginning of spring. It's the beginning of the calendar spring. The real spring, nature's spring, this year should start around the 20th of March. That's when we have the spring equinox, which means that we have exactly 12 hours of daylight and 12 hours of night, dark. After the spring equinox, the days are longer than the nights and they progressively get longer and longer till about the 24th, 25th of June. And then the days start getting shorter again. So, Despite spring, according to nature, is going to start on the 20th of March, but these longer days that we already have now, it's at least two and a half, maybe more hours longer, the sun has begun to shine, and a lot of my plants are beginning to show activity, more so than they did during the winter. Another poor thing, my poor little... Oh, Hoya Callistophila. It was just doing nothing. Absolutely nothing. Apart from the fact that a long, long, long time ago, it put out this one leaf. And that's it. It did sprout what looked like a new stem coming out, a new growth point, but that died off. So I thought I'd better investigate what's going on with this plant. So I took it out of its pot, and what do you know? It's planted 
in a cocoa husk plug. So these, you know, Hoyas have very tender roots. I don't know how they push through the coconut husk. And so I soaked the plant for about a, a good half hour in uh, barely lukewarm water and tried to pull this husk plug in pieces off. Well, you know what happens when you try to do that. You also pull off the very fine roots that are in that cocoa husk plug. Managed to get them all off, had some roots, no problems at all. So I put it in perlite and stick it into my little glass vase with some plastic cling, neck or cling wrap on the top to maintain the humidity. And it has activated a growth point. So things are happening. And on this little stem, I can see it's forming what look like aerial roots. And there are two little growth points that are sort of going green and getting a little bit fatter every day. So I still can't see any roots, but it hasn't been in this uh, perlite for very long. But considering I can see activity on this stem and I can see a growth point that's pushing its way out and turning green, I think it's going to survive and it's going to do well. So that's, and of course my Hoya Australis, overwatered, root rot, had to wash all the roots, clean off all the, the rotted roots, soaked it in a mixture of hydrogen peroxide and water for about an hour. And I've also um, put it in um, perlite in a little mini glass house. And uh, I'm waiting to see what happens um, for the time being, because the, the pot had two plants in it. One of them looks like it's okay. The other one is very sort of extremely wilted. It's not dead yet. It's not dropping its flowers. Hopefully it'll push out some new roots, but if worse comes to worse, I'm hopeful that I'll still have out of the two plants, I'll still have one left. Now, the other things that I would like to show you that's changed, we'll need a little walk around. So bear with me for just a moment. Now I have to step back because it doesn't actually fit in the frame. This is this uh, Anthurium bird's nest. Anthurium. This is its newest leaf. It's taller than the other leaves and it's still very, very soft. So it hasn't hardened off yet. So I'm really, really excited that this is going to be a nice big leaf to compete with the ones that was on the plant when I got it. And I can see down below that there's going to be another new leaf coming out. Here is my Aglonema red valentine. One, two, three, four, the five red leaves you can see are all new leaves that uh, I've got since I bought this plant in October 2022. All growing under a Sensi grow light. Here is my Philodendron Imperial Red. It's given me three new leaves and uh, that's the most new one, which got a little bit stuck, a little tear in it, but it's putting out another leaf. And the other day I was in a supermarket and it had for like three euros, this little Philodendron. No idea what it is. Once again, the label just said Philodendron. I have no idea what it is, I'll see as it grows, what it turns out to be. And over there, we have my little philodendron fat boy, very slow grower. I've also had it since October, 2022, and it only gave me one leaf, but it is pushing out leaf number two. So let's go to another. Now we are by my north facing kitchen window. Sorry, it's dark outside. This is my little Sansevera Mercado or Mercado snake plant. Of course, it's now a Dracaena bacularis mercado, but for me, it's still a Sansevera. Here's my Ficus tenecki. 
which I've had for quite a while. Just love, love these, the pattern on the leaves. And it's given me this new leaf. And there's another one coming out, sorry. But this I have by my south window. And I've actually just moved it to this spot because there's more light here. And I have one more plant on this window apart from my Monstera cuttings. And that is a Ficus Lirata Bum Bambino. It's a little one and it's been here also since October. Uh, in October, it uh, pushed out three new leaves. It's looking quite well. And I spotted today, here we go. It's pushing out another new little leaf. As I said, the amount of sunshine we're getting has increased and boom, the plants are all reacting. It's the big awakening of spring. I'll just go to another spot, just a minute. Now we're by one of my south facing windows and uh, I got these pots, three of them, the other day at Ikea. So I've put some plants in them and in the very, very center, I've put my Hoya pubicalyx, which I'm pretty sure now I saw a clip on YouTube that a person also had this particular one and she referred to it as a pubicalyx pink silver. And I think this is the same, same variety. It, this um, Hoya pubicalyx pink silver is one of the most common varieties that are sold in uh, garden stores and big box shops. So I, but I do have to wait until it eventually flowers. And if I get some nice big deep burgundy colored flowers, then I'll be absolutely sure that it's not just a pubicalyx splash, but it's a pubicalyx pink silver. It is doing very well up here. It's sending out tendrils left, right and center. Uh, I will eventually have to, I think, put it on a trellis growing up. So that's it in this corner. By the way, in case you're not sure, this is not a plant. This is Benji. These are the little pitter-patter of feet that sometimes you might hear behind me as I'm filming. Gorgeous dog. It's a, a Basenji. This is this dog that uh, doesn't bark, doesn't have a dog smell. And it has a curled up uh, tail, which sits on its back. So there's no problem that uh, a wagging, because he can't wag his tail. There's no problem that a, a wagging tail is going to hit any of my plants. And in any case, he's not interested in my plants. Though so this is my lovely little Benji with his sad little eyes and his little creases on his forehead. But a wonderful dog, wonderful dog. So back to the plant. And here is my Philodendron Gloriosum. And this is the latest leaf, really big. The leaf in one of my previous videos that I was very worried about, it seems to be okay. It's greened up, it's got a little bit of yellow. There's another leaf pushing out. So oh, hopefully this one will be bigger than this one. I've actually moved this uh, Gloriosum away from being directly under the Sensi grow light and put it to one side for two reasons, to give it a little bit less light and to encourage all the leaves to grow in one direction. Down, there's my poor old Hoya Australis Lisa. Hopefully it will root and sprout in this perlite and I'll have some nice new roots. Here is my Philodendron gigantum aureum, and I, if I do stick my nose right down there, I can see that it's getting ready to push out two more new leaves. My, 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 my Philodendron, this fellow here, he is gorgeous. I do love him. Not a lot of people don't like this particular species anymore, but I love it. He's growing beautifully. He's, look, 
he has gorgeous, 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 gorgeous oh, root system. You can just barely, barely see there. Very healthy roots and he's growing beautifully and I'm very happy with it. Now, for another plant, get ready. This is my Alocasia zebrina. Don't ask me what's going on with this plant. I don't really understand these two yellow leaves, but they're not crisping or anything. It's not a variegated plant. I think I just under fertilized it because I do understand that alocasias are heavy feeders, but all in all, this was my first new leaf about two weeks ago. And then last week, it started pushing out this leaf and this leaf here. And each one of these leaves that's coming out is slightly bigger than the one before. So I'm hopeful that this one that hasn't unfurled yet is going to be even bigger. But none of the other leaves are dying off. It isn't plus one, minus one. But these, these yellowing leaves, I don't know. I've upped the fertilizer so that this one of these new ones also showed a bit of yellowing, but I managed to stop it. I think it was a, this one also looks a bit pale, but I have to increase the fertilizer, I think. If you've got any ideas of what's going on with this alocasia, do let me know. And you haven't seen that plant yet. That's my Hawaiian spider plant. I do like it very much because the little babies are variegated. But as the leaves mature, it also sends out new leaves, uh, which are slightly variegated, but as they mature, they turn green. And one more plant we need to have a look at, and it's here. Look what it's done. This is my, which supposedly was purchased as a Alocasia poly Amazonica, which I'm sure it's not, but as you can see, the leaf shape, it's wrong for an Amazonica. Apart from the fact that the leaf is upside down, don't ask me why, but it's decided to come out upside down. It's looking quite healthy and I've planted two of the little babies from its corms in the same pot. So hoping, hopefully I will get a nice bushy plant. The interesting thing is that these very young plants are really dark purple underneath. Dark, dark purple underneath. But Mama has just tiny bits of purple, but green underneath. So let me know below if I'm wrong in <coughs> thinking that this is a Alocasia pink dragon. It does, it does have pink stems. Because the leaf shape is wrong for, a, for, a, for an Amazonica. Well, that's it. That's my little plant update for today. I haven't shown you all of the plants that I've got. There still is a few little surprises left to show you. But... We have to hunker down tonight. There's a very intensive low pressure system zooming in to this part of Europe from the west of Europe. We've been warned that tonight we're going to have very heavy snow and blizzard conditions and potentially very dangerous high winds, which may cause damage. So um, check that all the windows are closed. Turn the heating on put on some music and hopefully it won't snow so much tonight that we have to dig ourselves out in the morning to get out and go for a walk with my dear little Benji. So please, all of you stay safe wherever you are and we'll see you next. And don't forget, don't forget, you know, you know the rules. Like and subscribe because it gives me a push to do some more. Because look, 
I'm also making some mistakes. Well, my hoyer, Australis, Lisa, root rot. How dare it? But it's my fault. I've overwatered it, obviously. Didn't let it dry out between its waterings. Yes, I do have a moisture meter. Yes, and I do used to check. I did check that uh, it's in it's in the red that it's dry before I water it. But you know, us people, a little bit of water here, a little bit of water there, and then the result is root rot. So hopefully, the next time we meet, I'll be able to tell you that I've had some success in the hoyas that I'm trying to root in. Uh, perlite that there's been success there so i'll keep you informed stay safe wherever you are and until next time ciao